Good morning, scientists. Today you're going to partake in a STEM challenge to create something that captures and collects water from a rainfall. Now, the reason why we're doing this is we live in California, and in California, we oftentimes experience something called a drought. A drought is a long period of time, months to even years, where there is very, very little rainfall and we experience a shortage of water. That means our streams and rivers can start to dry up, our lakes get smaller, and this can be really harmful to animals, plants, and all living things that live in the habitat that it is experiencing a drought. Now, us humans, we use water all the time in our daily lives. I use it every day. I drink a lot of water, I take a shower, I wash my dishes, even all of the food that you eat takes a lot of water to grow. So water use is really important. However, when we're in a drought and we don't have that much water, it's really important to conserve. To conserve means to use as little as possible to save for the future. So if I baked a whole batch of cookies and I'm going to conserve some so that my family can eat them too, Maybe I'm only going to eat one or two to save the rest of the cookies for other people. Get permission from an adult to make sure that it, you have permission to do this challenge before you begin collecting materials. Now I'm going to show you some materials that you can use, but don't limit yourself to these options. You could use tin foil, moldable, bendable, waterproof, excellent choice. You could use plastic bags in this experiment or saran wrap, something with plastic on it. My favorite, tape. We know how to rip tape, you put your fingers like this. If you don't have this type of painter's tape, you can use any type of tape. You can use cups. If I were you, I would use paper or plastic cups, something that's not going to break in case it falls over. You can use paper clips or anything else. If you have Legos at home that you'd like to use in your design, but don't limit yourself to just these items. You can build with whatever you would like. When you're building, it's really smart because this experiment, when you test it, you're actually going to use water to build it on top of something so that you don't create a big mess. So I'm going to use a baking sheet. If you have a plate or another sort of tray, or you could do this whole experiment outside in the outdoors and then it won't really matter if there's water on the ground. So I will build my experiment here. Are you finished building? It's time to test your design. Now I didn't build a design because I didn't want you to look at something that I would have made and made the exact same thing. I want to see your creativity. Now we're going to create our rainstorm. Now we know that when a rainstorm occurs, we don't get a stream of water happening in one space. We have a lot of little droplets and sprinkles that sprinkle everywhere at the same time. So to model a most effective rainstorm, I'm going to use a spray bottle. Now if you don't have one of these, that's okay. I'll show you how to do it in just a moment. If you have a spray bottle, make sure it's water. You can test it like this. If I squeeze it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and I can even squeeze it like this and see if my water is caught by my device. Now, if you don't have a spray bottle, that's okay. You can get a cup or pitcher of water. And because water doesn't fall all in one spot, you can pretend that it's raining a little bit everywhere. You know this is what a typical rainstorm looks like, but that's okay. Models aren't always 100% accurate to what the real world is. Who knows, if your design is good enough, maybe an engineer will build a life-size one of it for a real drought. Have fun building and I can't wait to see your designs.